I'll give you a hint on, on how I describe it. I was in the Navy years ago, and we went to something called an aid school for electrical motors and generators and stuff like that. And the guy drew up a picture. He said, this is a motor. This is a motor. It's got windings in there. He says, it's a motor. It's a generator. They're the same machine. You put voltage in, shaft goes roundy roundy. You turn the shaft roundy roundy, voltage comes out. That's what he was trying to say. They're the same machines. Vacuum S is basically the electromotive force generated when you back drive the motor shaft. That's why it's called vacuum S. Otherwise, it'd be called forward vacuum S. Okay? Now, what is vacuum F equal to? Depends on the speed. Total sound of the motor. Okay. Question. Uh, you repeat the question, please. Huh? The question. Repeat the question. What is what is what do you think vacuum F is equal to? In other words, you would say it's equal to this. What do you think it's proportional to or equal to? How much vacuum F be equal to? Proportional to velocity. It's uh, that uh, like voltage per thousand RPM or something like that. Generally. Yeah. Some current current that depends on the resistance of the, of the wind winding on the motor, right? And the current that... So like F equals uh, 120 over P for the number of volts. Right. That's true. That's what it's proportional to, but that's not what it's equal to. Okay? And the reason I say this is we also get applications that are vertical load applications or applications like that printing press when they pull the <coughs> material through and then you pull the material through by hand to get it fed through and they back drive it. Okay? Vertical load application, if it starts falling down, you get back EMF. But when it hits the bottom, something different happens. Where do you get the highest voltage out of that motor? While it's falling or when it hits the bottom? It's when it hits the changes the bottom. magnetic. I mean, <coughs> the motor stops, you just get a spike, kind of like that. Like a coil in your car. There you go. Coil in your car. You get a spike, a bunch of inductors. Back EMF is equal to the rate of change of acceleration of the magnetic field, which is more mostly proportional to jerk, but it's one derivative past that. Okay? It is, the, the, it is proportional to the rate at which the magnetic field collapses. Okay? So when you hit a hard stop, you instantaneously stop the shaft from turning, and instantaneously the field collapses all in one shot. Okay, that's why a motor that's powered off of 48 volts, I can get a thousand volts out of that. Okay, like in your car, the ignition coil in a car. You put 12 volts in, it's a step up transformer, but it's a transformer. Transformers only work with AC. That's because when you change it from zero to 12 volts, it charges up for a second. When you discharge it, sat the saturated core collapses and you get 25 kilovolts into a spark plug. It's just like a motor. It's just a bunch of windings. It's a coiled up set of windings. The magnetic flux was going <coughs> down one way. When you open the switch and turn it off, it collapses instantaneously. You get a high back EMF spike. So when we ask other questions, why, how is it it's moving? Is it moving it to where it can get a sudden change in velocity? Not necessarily hitting a hard stop, but all of a sudden say it's a conveyor and it's moving along and something gets thrown onto the conveyor. A bag of concrete or something. Bam, you get instant change in speed. It doesn't matter whether it speeds up or slows down. It's the change in speed that will cause the voltage spike. Okay? Very important to remember. 